Have you ever felt like you tried everything, every diet, every workout trend, and still seeing no results? Well, I've been there dealing with thyroid issues and watching this struggle firsthand. For many women facing PCOS, insulin resistance, and other hormonal challenges, the journey is even tougher. It's not just about the physical struggle, it's about the emotional roller coaster with the tears and frustrations and even those moments of joy. If you're tired of starting and stopping and want to find something that truly works, join me as we explore the real truth about weight loss and embrace all of the highs and lows together. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra, and here on my channel, we're all about creating a life you love. So that being said, we're gonna hop into today's video. So today we are kicking off our very first episode in our weight loss truth series. So today we're getting into the nitty gritty. We're talking about myths that need to be debunked. We're talking about what weight loss really looks like. Cause let me just tell you this, weight loss isn't just about having a perfect diet or spending hours at the gym. Weight loss can look like an extremely emotional process with extreme highs and extreme lows. The roller coaster of emotions is kind of crazy throughout this journey. I'm not going to even hold y'all up. A weight loss journey has a lot of hard truths that people don't really talk about here online because sharing your weight loss journey can be a vulnerable experience. You don't really know like what's really going on with somebody's weight loss process unless you're truly watching them from start to finish. And honestly, that's kind of one of my regrets here. Like I've been wanting to talk about weight loss for years, but I, I've had like those extreme highs and those extreme lows. I've been up and I've been down and I kind of just felt like I was not in the place to, you know, share anything about weight loss with people if I didn't reach, you know, my ultimate goal weight. Um, and now I'm officially like, maybe like 10 pounds from an ultimate goal weight. So um, I kind of feel like just a little bit more comfortable to speak about these things. However, if you are a person who wants to start talking about their weight loss journey, wants to show, you know, the highs and lows of your journey and truly show the transformation of the person that you are, I highly encourage you to just go for it. Because honestly, somebody is waiting for your story. Somebody is waiting to hear the things that you have to share. Because guess what? We all have a unique story. We all bring unique things to the table. So why not? And honestly, this weight loss series is going to be for people who are truly looking to transform their mindset and their body. Because honestly, a lot of this stuff starts with just getting your mindset together and then the rest will follow. The rest will manifest itself if you are in the right space mentally. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and hop into the video. So just to give you guys a little bit of background on me and my journey and my experience, I'll try to keep this brief because it's kind of long, but I'm a person who grew up like as a chubby child, I kind of feel like I went from like a hundred pounds to like 140. 60 pounds. I don't know in what order that kind of happened, but I do know by the time I was in high school, I was weighing like 160 and I kind of sat comfortably at 160. I wish my job would leave me alone. I'm trying to build my career today, like legit. But anywho, I personally have sat around 160, like a good majority of my life, like 160 is kind of just like my comfort zone. Well, it's been my comfort zone and it is no longer my comfort zone and I don't want to be there anymore. I don't want to ever go back there. So let me just say that. But like I said, I sat around like 160. So by the time I ended high school, I was like 160s. Um, went off to college, gained like freshman 50, y'all. Not even gonna hold y'all up. I got up to like 210 in college and by the time college was over, um, I got down to 153 and that was the lowest I had ever seen in my adult life. So I'm like, okay, I'm digging this. And I was able to maintain it. Then boom, I get a thyroid problem. Um, I had a thyroid nodule that led to a cancer scare. And the thing about your thyroid is it controls like your metabolism, make sure your hormones are working right. Like your thyroid is a vital organ that you need for your body to function properly. And mine was not functioning properly because baby, when I tell you I gained like 40 pounds in the span of like maybe like a month and a half it was kind of freaky nothing changed about my lifestyle nothing changed about my workouts nothing changed about my eating but I literally just blew the fuck up like quite literally face was puffy everything was puffy and like I couldn't understand what was happening I'm like well damn maybe I'm depressed and like depression can like you know lead to 
weight gain. Most people get like weight loss. I don't have that kind of depression. I wish, I wish, but I don't. Yeah, so that kind of just led me into like this place to where I was just stuck. I was stuck at 194 for like a while. I want to say maybe like two or three years. I got surgery in 2021 um, and it took a full year for my hormones to kind of just get back like in order and for my body to actually start losing weight again. So at the end of 2022 in December, I told myself, I'm like, look, you're about to lose this weight. We're not about to be uncomfortable in our skin anymore. I actually have a video all about that on my channel. So I'll link that here. But at that point, I lost like 25 pounds before March of 2023. And I was able to keep that 23 pounds off the entire year. I don't know if I said 23 or 25, but it was somewhere within that range. And I was able to keep that off the whole year. And then the following year, which is 2024, which is now, I, at the top of the year, I took some before pictures and I'm like, look, I'm getting married. I'm turning 30 and it's time to be a bad bitch. And it's time to just be in my main character energy. This is something that my friend says all the time. So that was kind of my motive as well. I'm like, yeah, it's time for you to shine. It's time for you to feel comfortable in your skin. I've made myself small like my whole life because I felt uncomfortable in my skin. And it's because deep down inside, I knew I wasn't supposed to be in this fat suit. I knew I was not supposed to be a big girl. It took me time to actually, you know, get out of that headspace, honestly. And today, 53 pounds down in total, I feel a lot more comfortable in my skin. I would like to help other people feel good about themselves and really just realize like your body is precious. Your body keeps you alive. And honestly, if you don't feel comfortable in your skin, you have the ability to change that. You have the, the drive to change that. Honestly, it's just a simple shift of the mind and you can make it all happen. You can become the woman of your dreams. You can have the body of your dreams. You can have every single thing that you want if you simply believe it. First things first, we're gonna be debunking some myths that we hear out here in the weight loss community. First thing is, I know you guys heard this because it's the only thing you're probably gonna see mainly when it comes to weight loss is, oh, it's as simple as calories in, calories out. I mean, it is as simple as calories in, calories out. But the thing is, like, as a woman, you're... Calories in, calories out may not be as simple as these gym bros or these gym, even gym girls that you see online. There are a lot of things that come into play when it comes to a woman. We have all of these hormones. We have um, other issues that can arise. Like for me, I have the thyroid issue. There are people with PCOS. There are people with insulin resistance. If you have any type of hormonal imbalance, that is going to hinder your weight loss process, honestly, because your body may not burn as many calories as the calorie calculator tells you or what you're, what you think you should be, you know, burning. And I have a video that kind of goes over like how to actually calculate your calories correctly, like what calculator to use and how to find the perfect number that kind of works for you. So I will link that video here for you guys. But it is as simple as the science of calories in, calories out. But you have to do a little bit of tweaking and project like working to kind of figure that out because you have to figure out what works for you. Because even if you do the calorie calculator, you might get back a number that's like 2,000 or 1,900 calories. And that could be way more than your body is actually burning or your metabolism could be like extra slow or your BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate, might just not be as high as what a calculator is telling you. And basal metabolic rate is um, how much your body, how many calories your body burns at rest. So you may think like, cause it's this girl online, TikTok, I know y'all seen her. And she just says like, um, your body naturally burns around 2000 calories anyway. So you should be eating this. You should be eating that. Buy my meal plans. Don't listen to stuff like that because everybody is uniquely made and everybody's body is different. And if you have the money, and the time, I would say go get a scan to actually get the accurate numbers. Um, I have this is not something that I've done, but I actually kind of want to. Um, a place just actually opened up in Dallas, so I might actually go look into that. But y'all, like, get an accurate number of what you should be burning and taking in because if you're following these calculators, you could be like literally stalling out your progress by not doing the right thing and having the right math 
so to say, because it's a science, it's a math to it, and it's simple, but it may not be simple for your body. So next we're going to talk about fad diets, and I'm a person who's done plenty of fad diets, and I've done like cabbage soup, I've done the smoothie cleanse, I've done like vegetarian, I've done vegan, I've done plant-based, like I've done like all of these like crazy extreme diets because I've always just wanted to lose weight. But the key is like you have to find a diet that works for your body because I've done even high protein, which everybody like glorifies and thinks that it's so great for the body. When I did high protein and I tried to take like creatine and trying to be this muscle mommy, like I gained a lot of fat. I wasn't gaining muscle. I was gaining fat. So the thing is your math has to be on point when you're doing stuff like that, or you're going to end up in a place where you don't want to be. Cause it's like, I'm like, I'm trying to lose weight but I am gaining weight and everybody online says I should be building muscle that's going to burn more fat and this high protein diet is going to help me. But the other thing about having, you know, these high protein diets, a lot of times we just see stuff that says high protein and we buy it and it may not be good for us. It may not have good ingredients for us. So like, that's another thing to kind of take, kind of intake. Even like if you have like meats, chicken, beef, like all that kind of stuff, like it may have high protein, but it also could be high in calories, which will make you go over your calorie expenditure if you're not counting the calories correctly. So that kind of goes back to that whole calories in, calories out thing. Even when it comes to diet, you have to make sure that you're doing it right because a, a diet that's high protein and is supposed to be so great for you, if you're not doing it right, it will land you right in the same place as a junk food diet. And that even pushes me into like an extreme weight loss. Like people do these extreme weight loss challenges and like 75 hard and stuff like that. And the thing is with these weight loss challenges, sometimes they are good to like kickstart, you know, a journey. But the thing is with a, a weight loss program or a diet program, you should be doing something that is super sustainable for you. I could do 75 hard if I actually wanted to. I do tend to work out twice a day, like a lot through the week. Like, but I also like drink alcohol. So that's not a realistic like diet for me because you may do that. Like, oh, I went, you know, three months, however long um, 75 days is. But like, I think, what is it like? Maybe two and a half or almost three months without like alcohol or cutting out all of this stuff. But the thing is, when you get back to your regular schedule program, your regular social life, like things that you actually do, you're not going to sustain the weight loss if you're not doing stuff that's realistic to your lifestyle. You're not if you're not doing stuff that you actually want to continue to do. It's not going to work. So that's the whole thing with like the fad diets, the extreme like workouts and like calories in, calories out. You have to figure out what works for you and what you can sustain. Because even you'll hear online like, oh, don't drop your calories to 1,200 or 1,400. That's not a sustainable diet. But guess what? That is my calorie number. So I have to make it a sustainable diet and I have to figure out how to make it a nutrient dense packed a diet for me to where it is sustainable. And I actually talk about that in my last video. So I will link that here as well. But those are a few myths that I want you guys to kind of think about because I feel like that's how most of us kind of go into our weight loss journey. It's like, oh, I'm about to do this diet. Oh, I'm about to do this crazy workout class. I'm going to do um, Orange Theory. And then it's like you do Orange Theory for a month or two months and you lose like 40 pounds or something. And then next thing you know, it like you go back to regular life and you can't keep up with that because you're not burning, you know, that many calories or you're not eating that extreme deficit of calories that you would in some sort of like fat diet. Okay, so let's go into the next thing, which is going to be the realistic, the real raw truth, like what weight loss really looks like, y'all. And I'm just going to say it as blunt as I can. 
Weight loss isn't an emotional roller coaster. You're going to experience self doubt. You're going to experience tricks of your mind. And it's just like, you have to be able to roll with the punches because this is a, a journey. This isn't just, you know, a sprint. This is a marathon. Like you have to keep going, even though something bad is happening. Like, honestly, you know, this y'all know this life be life in, but guess what? You got to stick to the plan and stay a course when you're trying to be on this journey and it's a lifestyle so like don't do anything that's just like you know super extreme that are, that may send you into these highs and these lows for me personally I've had you know the experiences as to where I'm like oh yes like in August I mean not August I keep saying August in April I lost like seven pounds and I'm like oh okay I lost seven pounds. But then the next month, I only lost like maybe three or four pounds. And it's like, okay, I was high. And now I'm like, mm, is it really working? But, or you may have moments as to where the scale isn't moving at all. And you're like, am I even really losing weight? Like, do I look better? Like you go through all of these things in your mind, but you cannot let that deter you from your goal. Like if you're a girly who like, bloats up on your period or you bloat up after having you know a cheat meal or something like that you cannot let that number on the scale deter you from the goal you know what because shit happens but you got to just get up and keep like going and that kind of just pushes me into my next point and that is like mindset you can do anything that you put your mind to guys like I think the biggest change for me happened December 18th 2022, I told myself, you're going to lose this weight. You're going to put yourself in a body that you're comfortable with. And you're going to show up and be the person who God called and made you to be. And you're going to let that weight go. Like the weight is literally weighing you down, but you have to start with your mindset. You have to shift your mindset. You have to ditch the negative beliefs. You have to tell yourself that there is no other choice and this is happening for me and you have to believe it because you can't just sit up here and be lying to yourself and not believe in it because guess what? Manifestation is so powerful. Like the things that you think happen. So think positive things about your journey. Think positive things about your life because the moment you think some negative shit is going to happen, it's going to happen. And I'm not... I'm not going to lie to you like so serious. So have your mindset together. So believe in yourself, ditch the negative beliefs. Like you really start to take in new information, learn what you need to learn, um, help shift your mindset by meditating, doing affirmations, like pour into yourself so you can actually feel good. So you can actually show up for yourself. We know like you have to have your mindset in order because that will help you combat, you know, having the highs and lows of life. And when life be life in and you're not motivated and things like that, you know that you're still on a mission. You're still on a journey and you still have shit to do. Like today, I was tired. We were in Austin all weekend. We got back yesterday evening. I went grocery shopping. I meal prepped. I cleaned up my house. I still woke up at 430 even though I was tired AF and went to the gym. My workout may not have been like extreme like I literally walked for an hour on the treadmill from like 3.0 to like 3.5 speed nothing crazy y'all like nothing but I did not let like me being tired or me not being in the mood like deter me from my mindset like this is what we're doing these are the habits that we build this is the discipline that I have to have to get to the destination or get through the journey that I'm trying to be on guys like that is how you have to think about this weight loss like you cannot be controlled by your emotions. Like your mind has to be stronger than your emotions because something is going to always happen. But you have shit to do and you need to get it done. So next thing is going to be, you have to have a plan that works. And I'm specifically speaking to the ladies here, but we go through this 28 day cycle. You guys know this. Um, well, you should know this if you don't. And we are not the same person throughout the month. I don't know about y'all, but like I literally can feel the shift in my cycle through each phase. We have the um, menstrual phase. We have the follicular phase. We have the ovulation phase and the luteal phase. I'm currently in my luteal phase. You're in luteal phase. You tend to be more tired. But having a plan 
that revolves around your cycle can help you show up better in your workouts. It can help you show up better in life in general because even when it comes to having a plan around your cycle, it's actually called cycle syncing. And if you guys want to learn a little bit more about it, please let me know down in the comments below. But like cycle syncing can really be a game changer to your weight loss. It can be a game changer to your cycle in general. Um, I started cycle syncing in at that tail end of 2022 and I don't even have serious period cramps anymore. My period went from like seven days to like now I have like a solid four to five day period. So it's like it is has helped my body like regulate like its hormones. I went from a 31 day cycle to now I'm at 27 or 28 days. So I have become like more regular. Like I can feel my body working how it's supposed to work. And I'm very much in tune with my body. But I feel like you have to be able to adapt your workouts to how you actually feel. So you don't have energy, you know, in your luteal phase. So maybe you should kind of take it back, do some walking, light stretching, uh, low impact Pilates, stuff like that. But like when you're in your fertile week and you're ovulating, you're going to have like super high energy. So you can be doing hit during those times. So that is what I mean when I say you have to have a plan that you can adapt to your life. And even just besides like cycle syncing. So if say if you're not um, not a girl or not a female or whatever the right term is, uh, if you don't have a uterus, uh, let's just put it that way you still have to be able to adapt your plan to life because say if you're super restrictive and I feel like that's where most people like start to see weight loss is like from this super restrictive life, um, super restrictive diet. It's like they, they don't go out with their friends because they're going to mess up on their diet or they don't eat like certain things because they're going to mess up on their diet. They just kind of lose out on like a, a piece of life because they're, they're, not adapting to the surroundings and the thing is you have to be able to just keep going with the punches like you should be able to go to brunch and find something you know reasonable on the menu that's realistic for your health goals and even if you want to have that be a cheat day cheat day doesn't have to be anything super bad and I tend to be way more relaxed on the weekends but something that I do is I actually still move my body on the weekends um I I sometimes work out on Sunday, but I usually don't. I kind of just go to church and keep it easy. But on Saturdays, I get up and I make sure I'm doing some sort of like cardio on the weekend. That way I'm putting myself in a little bit of deficit before I get to like the fun part of the day where I can still have some fun and have room to have that fun. So you kind of have to adapt your life and prepare yourself. But it's really just all about like planning ahead, honestly. So you just have to make it work for you. Make the situation like realistic and sustainable for your lifestyle. Okay, so next thing is to you have to have, you know, your healthy alternatives in order to have a sustainable like life throughout this process. We can't cut everything out, but we I mean, we can cut things out, but we can also add things to our life that, you know, replace our bad stuff or our highly processed stuff or our stuff that is filled with sugar like find healthy alternatives um I'm not a big candy person but when I am like looking for candy I don't remember the brand but I'll put it here um it's like a a sugar free or a sugar alcohol free candy that I like to have and the whole package is like 100 calories so it's not that bad to me I also like to do like a chocolate covered strawberry sometimes if I really want like something sweet and even on my cycle I tend to do like a dark chocolate bar that I get from Whole Foods that has like crushed up dried raspberries in it that is like super good and it just kind of hits that sweet tooth that I'm really looking for. So you have to find, you know, your healthy alternatives. Even for me, I have a slight sensitivity to gluten, so I can't do the pastas. And a lot of people get like bloated from pastas and bloated from like gluten products and they didn't even realize that they might be gluten sensitive. So I do like gluten alternatives. I'll do a pasta that's made from lentil or I'll do a gluten-free pasta. Um, pastas that are made from lentil contain protein. So it's like, you have to find things that make your diet make sense. So, but that just starts with like research. You can find this stuff out on TikTok. If you want to know some more of my healthy alternatives, let me know. I can do a video all about that as well. Lastly, we just have to talk about it has to be consistency over perfection. If you are always striving for perfection, you're only going to disappoint yourself because honestly, 
Perfection is hard to strive for every single day. I know we may have days or weeks where everything is going perfect, but guess what? Life is going to life, like I said before, and just you're not going to feel the same every day. You're not going to feel 100% every day to go 100% every day. So the thing is you have to learn to be consistent, and that kind of just comes from that mindset piece in being disciplined. So you, you change your mindset, you build up the discipline, you build up the habits that helps you have that consistency. So if your workouts aren't consistent over that week, make sure your diets are consistent over that week. If your diet isn't consistent over that week, make sure you're moving your body a little bit more. So just because one aspect of your life isn't looking like on the perfect side doesn't mean like it has to be the end all be all. Just because you miss a workout does not mean it's the end all be all. Just make sure that you're being consistent in the plan that you have for yourself, even if those days look different each day and day by day, because It just matters if you show up. Just show up for yourself. Try your best. Do your best. But the thing that you have to do is make sure that you're consistent. You're showing up for yourself every single day. And right now we're talking about weight loss, but that's just for anything like that happens in life. Anything that you want in life, you have to show up and be consistent for yourself for anything to kind of grow. So don't like strive for that perfection piece because it might be um, unattainable. It might send you into like a downward spiral, but just focus on being consistent. Just focus on controlling the controllables that you can control and that situation for that week or that day or that month or that season of your life. And honestly, I feel like you'll be in a good place. You'll, that consistency, having that consistency is going to change your life, honestly. Like if you are in a a low um, part of that roller coaster, if you're in a low emotional state, if you're dealing with some self-doubt, as long as you are consistent, it's going to work out. Like I just went over, um, I was down in Austin this weekend and I did like a lot of drinking, and a lot of eating, like usually like that I usually would not do, but I still got up and I went to the gym this morning because that's what I consistently do. And the thing is, I thought I would be like up in my weight. Like I, I got on the scale this morning and I'm like, I just know I gained like some water weight. I know I have a few pounds on me and actually I lost weight. So the thing is like, You have to get out of that self-doubt and just continue to show up for yourself because you'll be surprised what your body can do for you. You'll be surprised how your mindset and just believing you're believing in yourself, like just how great life can just change. And I'm, I'm not trying to be like doing too much or like super emotional about it, but like so serious guys, like life changes when your mindset changes. So kind of just keep that in mind. um, And remember that weight loss is not a destination. It is a journey. It is a marathon. It is not a sprint. Like it is not just something that's just going to happen. Learn to fall in love with the process. Learn to fall in love with taking care of yourself. Truly make it a lifestyle instead of just making it like a daunting task. Like I, I swear this is like my 20th time trying to lose weight, but this is the only time that I truly told myself that there was no other option. This is the only time that I actually believed in myself that it will actually happen for me. This is the only time that I truly believed in my heart and my soul that I can, you know, get to a goal weight or get to a goal like close eyes and it happened. So it's really, it's really all about that power of that mindset, guys. So in our next episode, we're going to be talking about accepting where you are and setting realistic goals because sometimes Sometimes, just in life in general, we can get ahead of ourselves because we're not being realistic about where we are, what we can actually do, and what we can actually get done in that time. So we're going to be going all through that um, in our next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please let me know down below. Um, if you guys want to know some, um, if you guys want to know a little bit more about some of my favorite healthy swaps, let me know down below. Um, and also, I'm thinking about doing a cycle cycle syncing series and how cycle syncing helps balance your hormones, give you a better period, and honestly, weight loss. So if you guys want to hear a little bit more about that, let me know down below as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Eating low man is child for now, child, child. She got me wildin' now. Warrior tired, child for now, child.